Hello everyone, the Nordmeric here and in this video we will talk about gonorrhea which is a sexually transmitted disease caused by a bacterium known as the Neisseria gonorrhea. Now Neisseria gonorrhea belongs to a group of medically important gram-negative cocci. They form the coffee bean-like shape called as diplococci and they are non-spore forming, catalyst positive and oxidase positive. Neisseria gonorrhea is gram-negative that means if you stain Neisseria gonorrhea on a slide with gram stain you get to see gram-negative diplococci. This is the original microscopic picture of that. Now, Neisseria gonorrhea is a fastidious gram-negative cocci. They are facultatively intracellular and typically appear in pairs as diplococci resembling the shape of coffee beans. Neisseria is non-spore forming and they lack motility. And they are obligate aerobe that means they require oxygen to grow. Now, where Neisseria gonorrhea belong in the microbial world? Now, in the microbial world of free-living bacteria, they can be either gram-positive or gram-negative. Gram-negative bacteria can be gram-negative cocci or gram-negative bacilli. Now, gram-negative cocci are Neisseria, Moraxella, and Acinetobacter. In Neisseria, we have two important medically relevant species known as Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitides. This video is all about Neisseria gonorrhea. Now, Neisseria infection is increasing with every passing year. This graph shows the global infection rate of Neisseria gonorrhea and as you can clearly see the South Asian countries like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and the entire African com continent are the worst affected. Now how Neisseria is transmitted? Neisseria transmission occurs through unprotected sexual intercourse, having multiple sexual partners, transmission can occur from mother to fetus during pregnancy or it may also get transmitted during blood transfusion. Now, the disease caused by Neisseria gonorrhea is known as gonorrhea. The common symptoms are abdominal pain, discharge from vagina or penis, and painful urination. Now, the pili and outer membrane protein 2 facilitate the addition of the gonorrhea or gon gonorrhea nizeri, that is the gonococcus, to epithelial cells, therefore make colonization possible. And then they colonize urethra, cause urethritis, they colonize cervix, causing cervicitis, they colonize rectum causing anorectal gonorrhea and sometimes conjunctiva leading to conjunctival gonorrhea and in children ophthalmia neonatorum. Neisseria shows an interesting mechanism known as the immune escape mechanism. The pili over the gonorrhea uh, gonococcus resists the phagocytosis of the Neisseria gonorrhea and the enzyme IgA protease produced by this gonococcus, that is Neisseria gonorrhea, helps in cleaving the IgA molecules and thus they invade or evade the immune system. Apart from that, they block the complement system, they block Th1 and Th2 cell actions and through Th17 cell, they invade the neutrophils or infiltrate the neutrophils and finally they cause lysis of the neutrophils and come out of them. Now let us see how in a laboratory setup we can diagnose Neisseria gonorrhea. Now Neisseria gonorrhea could be isolated using Thayer Martin media. Now this Thayer Martin media is a modification of chocolate agar media which contains an antibiotic cocktail. The cocktail includes vancomycin to inhibit gram positive bacteria, nistatin to inhibit fungal growth and cholestin to inhibit most gram negative bacteria other than Neisseria. Apart from that we can have PCR based tests from urine which are sensitive quick as well as cheap. In contrast to the gram staining from penile or vaginal discharge which are very non-specific and are not really efficient. Now once we have diagnosed Neisseria gonorrhea we have to treat you for that. Now treatment includes ceftriaxone injection. The CDC recommends a single dose of 500 mg of intravascular ceftriaxone for gonorrhea. Now ceftriaxone is a cephalosporin antibiotic and it will stop the infection but it will not repair any permanent damages caused by this disease. Now reinfection of gonorrhea is very very common and retesting after 3 months of treatment is advisable. Now gonorrhea shows high, highly variable antibiotic response and this uh, variability is due to ethnicity and geographical distribution of the disease. Now you may ask, are these, there antibacterial resistance in gonorrhea strains? The answer is yes. Scientists have found out gonorrhea has progressively developed resistance to antibiotics. And that is a point of concern. So in summary, 
we learned about a common sexually transmitted infection caused by a bacteria, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, that is gonorrhea. Now, the symptoms include genital pain and discharge from the vagina or penis. It can occur both in men and women and in all age groups. It is not difficult to treat, but if left untreated, it can lead to more serious health problems. And the diagnosis and treatment options were also discussed. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit the like button, share this video among your friends and peers. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you never miss a video from our channel. To get high quality notes and flashcards, you can follow Animated Biology with Urban on Instagram and Facebook. The link will be in the description. You can also support our channel uh, by monetary means by subscribing to us on Patreon. And you can also use the super thanks icon to support our channel so that we can continue to create high quality educational content for free. Now the super thanks button you can contribute using Paytm, Paypal or UPI. Now if you wish to connect with Arpan, the connection links will be given in the description box below. And for medicine related content, go and follow the Nerd Medic who is a proud collaborator of this channel. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.